You're watching Telecom TV at the Etsy Summit on 5G. And I'm joined now by Toktam Mahmoudi, who is Assistant Professor of Telecommunications at King's College University in London. Toktam, thanks for talking with Telecom TV. What work is the university currently doing to support 5G? So being a university in central London, uh, we focused on use cases that are very unique to us. Uh, London is in the heart of all the cultural um, exchanges in the world. Um, so we work a lot with the theatres in central London to enable um, immersive experience for, um, for theatre, basically trying to um, to transform the theatre industry in a similar way that cinema has been transformed over the past few years um, and see what we can do in the integration of 5G with the theatre industry. We also focus on the medical sector because uh, King's has a very strong medical school and has a very strong relationship with the uh, hospitals in the NHS and the National Health Service in the UK. So we work with the doctors to see how we can enable um, a remote um, interventions, robotic surgery, remote healthcare um, through the 5G network basically. Can any of these technologies be applied to today's networks or are they all 5G dependent? And definitely many of that can be pushed out earlier because, uh, because many of the technologies we're working on now is about scaling. Um, while if we don't necessarily want to, to think about scaling to a large number of users, scaling to a global connectivity, then many of those can be pushed out much earlier with the existing technologies. You mentioned the work that the university is doing with the healthcare and entertainment sectors in London. How important is it that we engage with these and other verticals as we develop the standards for 5G? That's actually a very good question because um, I think maybe the mistake that we as technologists did in the, um, previously is to design something for, um, for a, like a given crowd and then take it to them and say, now use it. While what we're trying to do now is to co-design the system together, to understand their need, understand their language and understand what they expect from a system. So we have a design which satisfies their expectation and is something which solve existing problems. It doesn't solve the you know, imaginative problems, basically. An area that is attracting a lot of attention in 5G is this concept of ultra-low latency, as low as one millisecond, which is quite incredible, and it's really stretching the boundaries of physics. Well, I mean, you mentioned very nicely that some of these tight targets are basically against the rule of physics, so we can't go beyond nature. Uh, but on the other hand, some of these latencies came from the fact that human interception is built like that. So if we want to enable uh, a certain uh, remote um, operational experience, then the latency should be in a way that the operator has a feeling of a real-time communication based on the neurological impression of the body. So one millisecond is not necessarily a latency for everything. It's a, in for a very specific case. Um, in various tests and experiments we did with the, um, with the haptics, uh, we get latency of few tens of milliseconds, so 10, 12, 15, is still acceptable latencies for a couple of operations. Um, the tens of milliseconds is still challenging for to be achieved over uh, long distance communication links, especially when we go through internet, it goes over multiple hops, transfer through um, different systems, heterogeneous systems. Um, so there has to be various developments in the network, various changes in the network that can deliver that. In particular, the community is working on making uh, protocols lighter and um, different physical layer, this different networking protocols, um, enabling all the concept of edge computing, etc. At King's, we uh, work on um, a fully programmable, basically our experimental setup is based on a fully programmable end-to-end -end wireless access and the uh, internet core. Um, and we try to, to test various um, software and reconfigurable um, techniques. For example, we run an SDN network and we run dynamic quality of service modeling um, to see how with different queue prioritization we can get different delays uh, in the packet delivery. So looking at ultra low latency, is this an opportunity for us to incorporate some of the advances made in AI? 
I mean, that's uh, like you read my mind. But uh, so one of the areas that we're working on, in fact, is developing uh, encoder for these um, type of tactile devices. Um, the exact similar way that they are encoders for video and audio and they improve the delivery of audio and video. Um, this is a very untouched word yet to see um, what are the important signals, how the multi-modal uh, sensory um, can be translated and synchronized into coded data, which comprom doesn't compromise the latency as well. And of course, a lot of intelligence could be added to the edge um, to the edge devices to compensate for the potential latency of the communication. AI is a very good example because um, I currently do a lot of collaboration with the AI team in the department. Since we realize there is a huge capability of integrating AI into um, the communication protocols. The telecoms industry is working to a deadline of 2020 for the standardization of 5G, but I assume the work at King's College is going to continue beyond that. So the way I see it is maybe a bit more transformative because uh, if you think 10, 15 years ago also, we weren't much working on the wireless communication the way that we work today. We, I mean, um, our, many of our work were mainly on the internet protocols, for example, and that's an industry that has transformed various aspects and now we see something completely different, right? We have these applications that all our life runs on, on various applications. Um, I, I personally think the... Uh, 5G also would transform the industry in a way that will create a lot of new avenues for um, new opportunities of research. It might not be working on similar networking protocols, but it would be a, a new era uh, for research. Top Tam, thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs>